Right, I'm back to do my predictions for UFC 166. Uh, but first, I'm going to talk about uh, UFC Fight Night 29, about a few things, and also uh, about uh, something that has come up in the UFC. So, my fighter of the night for that event is going to be Dong Hyung Kim, and the reason is uh, his win over Eric Silva which was very unexpected, um, a quite uh, dramatic and probably not as lucky a shot as it looked. I also want to talk about Rusamar Palhares and what he did. He beat uh, Mike Pierce pretty quickly with a heel hook. The problem is he didn't release that heel hook at the end of the match. The other problem is that he's done this sort of thing before on several occasions, even in the UFC. Now, uh, the UFC have taken in the past quite abrupt actions against people who hold submissions on uh, after the referee has intervened. Most fighters uh, will even stop before the referee actually sort of gets there, although they, they should... Uh, continue until the, the referee waves it off. But by the time the referee is touching them and uh, pulling their arms, it's too late. It, it is too late. In terms of fighter safety and in terms of the consistency with them handling these cases, what they've done to Rosemar Palares is absolutely justified. The guy needs to get sacked. I mean, it's just as simple as that. Um, there is some talk about the fact that this might not be malicious. You know, they say that Rosamar Palares has, has had a terrible background. So have a lot of fighters, but we'll forget that. OK, so he's had a, a terrible background. And they say one of the problems is he just doesn't know when to stop. Uh, that is as dangerous <laughs> for the opponent as somebody who is doing it deliberately. Now, whether or not this was absolutely deliberate isn't the reason that he should be uh, given the, the sack. The reason is it is too dangerous for his opponent either way uh, to be allowed to um, uh, face that sort of risk uh, when when fighting with Samar Palares. So, you know, I'm sorry that he may not get that and I, I hope that if that is true, he can get the help he needs to, you know, be able to crack out of whatever that's whatever it is that stops him, you know, getting so carried away. But I think it's totally justified. The thing I don't think is uh, so justified is the sacking of Benjamin Brinser. Benjamin Brinser is an undefeated welterweight who lives uh, in Germany. And he uh, was signed by the UFC, uh, who claim they don't do any background checks at all. <laughs> and uh, it has come to light that he, uh, well, he was accused uh, of being a, a neo-Nazi. Now, I have done my own little bit of research on this on, on, online. And it is true that he seems to be involved with um, a, uh, a group of people around some sort of football uh, thing. Um, I think the real problem is is not him but his friends in this circumstance i'm pretty sure pretty sure that benjamin brinsa himself is almost certainly not uh, a neo-nazi i think uh the fact that he has valley tudo written on his back um you know which is not a a, a german <laughs> phrase at all the fact that he uh, attends many, many things away from his own training camp. He actually seems to be the only one uh, in his training camp that actually leaves it and goes other, where, other places to do things uh, with other ethnicities and doesn't seem to have a problem. The problem I think the UFC might have with this is that I can't vouch for his friends. That is true. Uh, I can't say whether or not that sort of environment is absolutely 100% free of uh, the sort of fascism that uh, would not be tolerated. Um, and I, you have to remember that if Benjamin Brinser is to perform in the UFC, his friends, his crowd and his team 
are going to come with him. Um, and I would be less sure uh, that they would be um, <laughs> uh, acceptable. You know, a little bit of drinking uh, and your, your friend has won and that could get out of hand. That could get out of hand. Um, you only need to see the reaction of some of his teammates when he wins uh, on, on YouTube uh, videos. They do start chanting, they do start, and it's just a little bit, it's a little bit iffy if you are the UFC promoting uh, uh, um, uh, something on the television that could come across looking wrong. My personal opinion is that uh, Brinza is is not um, is is not in any way uh, racist like that, but I think the UFC have worried about who might uh, who they might accidentally be getting associated with um, through uh, uh, association, if that makes sense. Because I don't know. Uh, the jury is out, as far as I'm concerned as to whether uh, Brince's uh, friends and whether some of the people that he may uh, come across uh, are uh, a little bit too far right. Um, I, I have to accept that and I have to and, and that I, I understand why the UFC have done what they've done in that regard but I also think in one way it's terribly unfair uh, and there's another part of me that thinks, you know, even if he was, does it really matter that much for the purpose of fighting? You do see other fighters with um, uh, iffy tattoos, uh, which sort of are race, ethnicity based, which could be taken wrongly, and the UFC don't seem to have any problem with them at all. Um, it's a sign to me that the UFC is growing uh, and beginning to worry about the sort of image that it might portray. Um, so I just wanted to make my feelings absolutely clear on those uh, couple of points. And now, very quickly, <laughs> I'm going to run through my picks for UFC 166.